Here we are, it's day two of eighth grade math assessment practice. Please have your paper, pencil, and calculator ready to go. You'll have 60 seconds for each question. Combining like terms here. So we look at this entire statement, we need to combine everything that we can. So that means we're taking anything that has x squared in it, which would be these two terms here, and we're going to combine them. 3x squared minus an x squared is going to give us 2x squared. And then I combine the x's, which would be these two right here. They're both positive, so I get plus 5x. All I have for this without an x is minus 1. So does this uh, look like something? There it is. Choice D. Next question. You have 60 seconds starting now. Keisha has half as many quarters as dimes and twice as many quarters as nickels. What expression represents the number of coins Keisha has? If we don't know any of the actual numbers, so we're going to have to use variables, but if I start with dimes here and I just call dimes variable D, then I can get somewhere. So it says I have half as many quarters as dimes, so all we know is that quarter-wise if we divide the number of dimes in half or divide that by two that's going to equal quarters the other thing that's interesting here is we have twice as many quarters as nickels so reading that you're like uh... what does that mean um, what it means is there's half as many nickels as there are quarters since this is not its own variable think about it this way so here's nickels we if we relate it to d again so quarters there's d over 2, and if we divide that entire thing again by 2, th this would give us d divided by 2 divided by 2, which would be half as many nickels as quarters. Um, the last piece here, and we kind of start to see that maybe that matches letter d, total number of coins. So if we take the number of quarters plus the number of dimes plus the number of nickels, so here's those three pieces slightly rearrange it we're going to get choice D next question 60 seconds you're on the clock
Camera Club charges a flat fee of five dollars and twenty-five cents plus four dollars per hour. I'm going to circle that piece. That's these two are very important pieces for renting a video camera. Which equation relates the cost C of renting the camera to the number of hours H the camera is used? So we want the cost. So cost equals if we rented it for three hours it would be four times three right we don't know how many hours so the general equation would be some four dollars times the number of hours that we rented it plus that flat fee has got to go here five dollars and twenty five cents there's no variable attached to it because there's no that doesn't change so think about it this way if I rented the thing for one hour here's a test of our equation it's gonna cost me four dollars for that one hour plus five dollars and twenty five cents so that's nine dollars and twenty five cents if this was a two it would cost eight plus five twenty five and so on and so on but the coast goes or cost goes here if we match that to our choices we get letter D right here next question you have sixty seconds ready go Alright, which numbers a multiple of 12? So the definition of a multiple of 12 would be something that I can divide by 12 and get a whole number. Is this going to be a whole number? No. How about this? No. Is that going to be a whole number? Try it on your calculator. Doesn't look like it. No. 48 divided by 12, you can do that in your head. 4, whole number, 48, multiple of 12. 60 seconds to solve. Ready, begin. Which of these sets of numbers has elements that are all divisible by 3? Now what is that really saying? Here's a set of numbers. If all four of them you can divide by 3 and get a whole number, uh, then, you, then you have found that set. So let's take a look at choice A here. 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. 21 divided by 3 gives me 7. 27 divided by 3 gives me 9. 33 divided by 3 gives me 11. Yeah, I'm thinking if I go through, systematically go through A, B, C, D, and A gives me a correct answer, I'm just going to stick with it and I'm going to move on. And our math works here. Just to prove, take choice D, for instance. If we divide those all by 3, 
you're going to find the first three are good. We get 8, 3, 9, 83 divided by 3. Check it on your calculator. Does not give me a whole number. Choice D is gone. You're going to find the same thing in these other three choices. 60 seconds, you're on the clock. mean number of hours, so mean number of hours per week spent on leisure activities for teens. Teens is right over here, it's the lighter colored, so we kind of got to go through these lighter ones, figure out how many hours there are in each one. I'm going to estimate that at about 12, here's about 38, here looks like about 23, 10, and I'm going to go about 17. So these are your five activities. When we want the average, we need to add these five numbers together and divide by five. So we've got 12 plus 38 plus 23 plus 10 plus 17. Let's see if you can do it in your head. We got 50, 73, 83, 90, 100 hours spent. Divide that by 5, look what happens. We get 20 hours. Choice G. 60 seconds. Here we go. Alright, so we've got to interpret this graph. Which statement is not supported by the information in the line graph? So I just read each statement one at a time and see if the information on the graph matches. As height increases, so does weight. So what's happening here is as people are getting taller, it looks like, okay, we're, we're slowly getting up in weight as well. So each dot is somebody's height and weight. The taller they are, the heavier they are. That makes sense. So A is good. We like A. It's a good one, but we want the statement that doesn't make sense. This graph has a positive trend. Basically what this means is it's going up and to the right. If it were starting up here and going down and to the right, we would have a negative trend. But it's not, so this is a positive trend. People lose weight as they grow taller. Well. First off, the statement just sounds wrong, but it does not match the graph itself. So as you get taller, you actually put on weight, and the graph shows that each and every case. So it looks like choice C is incorrect. Let's just check D. As a person grows taller, they weigh more, which is basically the same, a restatement of choice A. So C is our choice. 
60 seconds. Ready, set, go. rounding to a certain place value here. What is 0 0.8945 rounded to the nearest one hundredth? Well really you just need to know which is the hundredth place. The first digit to the right of the decimal is the tenths, the second digit is the one hundredths, the one thousandths, the ten thousandths, and so on and so on. Um, if this, so we look at this digit here, so we want to round in this this spot here. So if this was a five or greater we'd round up to 90, which it's not, so this actually gets rounded off, so to speak, and our choice is letter B, 0 0.89.